there are some trees that are so closely associated with Africa that for many of us, they stir something deep within. The baobab is one such tree, with its distinct appearance and its strong links with antiquity, surviving as it does for sometimes well over 2,000 years. The majestic fig trees with their convoluted roots and huge trunks reaching up to the sky are another. Then there's the fever tree with its yellowy green tint and thorny crown, which is fast becoming a regular feature in our urban landscape. Not only because it grows quickly, but because of its aesthetic appeal, offsetting the stark lines of our man-made buildings and roads, and connecting us momentarily with the natural world of our bush felt areas. The tree's green colour is caused by chlorophyll, and in fact this is a great advantage, particularly in the winter months when there's less foliage on the trees and there's not enough energy to produce food through photosynthesis from the sun. There's almost an ethereal look to the tree, and they look absolutely spectacular, particularly when they grow in mass along the edges of watercourses and swampland, like here in Nduma Reserve, which is an international Ramsar wetland site. It's protected areas like this that are the few scattered remnants of systems that once flowed into each other in a vast interrelated mosaic. Now they're nothing more than small isolated islands surrounded by fences. Artificial barriers, which ironically require human intervention to ensure the natural balance between the various species is maintained within. As intrusive as the fence is, it's a necessary evil, keeping the animals in whilst ensuring that the reserve's natural resources are shared with the local communities on a sustainable basis. Once again, reducing the impact on the natural system within the reserve. It's when these barriers come down, as happened in this reserve, with the land invasion over the last few years, that the very fabric of this delicate ecosystem begins to crumble. Because of their location in the fertile soil surrounding the floodplain and the need to remove them to make way for the vegetables, the fever trees were the first species in the interconnected chain to feel the impact. The old giant fig trees that also grow close to the Pongola River were the next to suffer. In the case of the fever trees, their branches were used as fences to keep hippos out of the garden, blocking the animal's natural foraging paths, and the trunks used by poachers to make rafts for catching crocodiles on the floodplains. When we destroy a tree like this, we have an impact on many other flora and fauna in the interconnected web that exists here. Firstly, it's a pioneer species, providing vital nutrients to the soil so that other trees and plants may grow. They're also a haven for nesting birds, not just because of their close proximity to water, but also the thorns. They provide nesting sites as well as protection from predators. Spiders live under the bark where they feed on insects. When the bark falls off the tree, there's ready food for the birds. But it's not only the birds that benefit. Giraffe, baboons eat the green pods, and the vervets and bush babies love the sap that comes out of the trunk. So, it's not just a nursery, it's also a pantry. You know, it's not just the animals that benefit from this tree. It's us humans as well. The local folk grind the bark down, use it for treatment of sunburn, as well as boiling it for gastric ailments. Why the name fever tree? The early pioneers coming up into the north used to camp next to water and they used to get fever from mosquitoes, not the fever tree. The irony is the fever tree can actually be used to treat fever. When we destroy one element in the ecosystem, it impacts on a host of others. Man has manipulated nature to suit his own needs. But in doing so, we've lost our connectedness and the interdependency that is vital to our own survival. That's why it's so important to come to natural areas, to the wilderness, so that we can tune into nature and find some semblance of harmony in our lives. Our planet is just a dot in the universe. We are just dots on our planet. But if we all just do one thing, we can make a radical difference. This year I've planted a number of new indigenous plants on my property. It's attracted birds that I haven't seen in 25 years. For this week's dot, please go out, buy an indigenous plant and see how many other species it's going to attract.